of Gold Bazan. I am your host, Mahan, and today, alongside regular panelists Pejma, Sina, and special guest Armin, we will be previewing the 15th edition of the Persian Golf Pro League. How are you all doing today, guys? Good. Great to see you. Fine. Thank you. Nice to be back on the pod. So this season features 14 teams from the 2014-15 Pro League and two newly promoted teams from the 2014-15 Azadegan League. First being Sia Jarmagan of Mashhad as Group A champions and second was Fulada Novin as Group B champions. Fulada Novin were deemed eligible to take part due to being Fulada Khuzestan's B side. Many people were surprised as a, uh, as a result of this decision and Esther Lalo Ahvaz who had originally been relegated to the third tier of Iranian football, had been decided to be reinstated into the Pro League instead. So my first question goes, why, what do you make of such a decision? Was Esther Lala Ahmad the right candidate to replace Novi in such a case? And does this once again highlight the lack of professionalism rooted in our game? Uh, this first question goes to Sina. Well, I think uh, in terms of the Novin being promoted, I think... Uh, there was a bit of a confusion at first, and that confusion shouldn't have been there in the first place. I think they should have, you know, there needs to be a rule clarifying that if you're the B side of a, of a team who already plays in the top division, then regardless of the, where you finish, you're not allowed to be in the same division as your parent club. But uh, that wasn't clarified, and there was a lot of confusion until around a month before the league started. And finally, it was decided that Fulham and Obin weren't able to um, participate in the league, and their right was going to go to another team from the Khuzestan province. There was a, there was a bit of a talk of um, Nafta Masjid Soleiman, who had just been relegated from the uh, Pro League. Um, Sanat and Nafta Abadan was another team alongside the Sawal Athos. I think. When you consider everything and the fact that uh, Ahvaz has already two teams in, in the top division, you know, Sabula Khuzestan and Fulad, I think maybe the right decision was to give the right to San Atanaft, maybe. Uh, that was my personal opinion. Um, I don't think Nafta Master Suleiman had uh, the right to be there again, having just been relegated. And um, for the reasons I just explained, I don't think uh, Sabula Ahvaz was the right option but um, here we are they're, they're, they're already in the league they had a bit of a poor transfer window I'm unsure how they'll be performing but uh, it's uh, one thing's for, for sure it's going to be a very long season for them okay great stuff thank you um, I'm going to start with another question from a twitter follower at Hamoudi underscore LFC8 is this a season that the two Tehran Giants return to the top, or will it be contested by Naf, Traktor and Sepahan again? Um, to elaborate more, I'd like to ask this question to Pejman. Um, well, I hope that they will go back and make it a, make it a, a fun fight for the title. And that's what we've been seeing the last years. The, the, the title contender uh, is decided like in the last game, basically the last minutes so far. Uh, with that being said, uh, we all need uh, Paris Police and Estelle are doing good because uh, uh, they are the two biggest teams in Iran and among the biggest teams in uh, Asia. They draw a lot of attention, a lot of supporters, and when they're in Asia, they usually get uh, full stadiums. Uh, but if you look at the uh, transfers being made and how they've been playing so far. It's only been two rounds, so it's too early to make any conclusions. But uh, I would say that uh, Esserla looks like looks a little bit sharper uh, so far uh, with uh, with a coach already being there before Paris Mastumi. He knows the team well. Uh, a couple of really good players have, have joined the team, such as the goalkeeper Mehdi Rahmati, uh, but a lot of good players have also left the team. Uh, and Paris Police uh, seems to be Paris Police uh, in chaos. And that's been the, the rule for them the last couple of years. So even if they're used to it, chaos, is, chaos isn't something that you want to be used to. Uh, I think Branko Ivankovic uh, 
needs to get this team sorted out. He needs to get a proper goalkeeper and uh, uh, a fit squad. Because if uh, their goal scorer like Taremi, if he's uh, out of play, I don't know if they have players good enough to to replace him. Uh, or their foreign players, they haven't really played it much like this Bengtsson guy from Honduras. Uh, but I think that Persepolis can be a top three if they do well. So would you say that's a realistic target for Branko Ivankovic's side to achieve this season? I think it, it has to be for them, no matter what. It has to be a, a target for them to be a top three, maybe even four if they want to uh, regarding of Champions League. But top three is something that Paris players always have to aim to, no matter in what way or shape they are. And uh, you can't be a coach of, a, of that big team and say, well, we, we'll be happy with a sixth or seventh place, although the, the, the squad and the preparations are more likely to get you in that spot. So we'll see what, what happens. Mm-hmm. And a question for you, Armin, uh, alongside uh, you being a Paris Police fan, um, whilst Paris Police have made many impressive signings, I feel the loss of the captain, Mohamed Nouri, to Qatar is a big blow to the squad. Do you think Paris Police are lacking a real leader at this current present? Do you think the problems on and off the field creating, creating this instability is such a problem where players are shying away from such responsibility and where week in, week out, we see such individual errors keep occurring in this team? Yeah, I think there is a, there is a lack of leadership in the team, especially with Hadi Ruzi. I like him as a player, I really like him, but I don't think he's a leader. Like You could see that in the Esteban Khuzestan game with the tackle that he made, and that tackle was a straight red card. That was, a, that was actually a red card, and he was out of the game, and he shouldn't have made that tackle, especially as a captain. And most of the players that we have got are mostly either young players or players that haven't really proven themselves or have proven themselves but, like, but are like future talents other than uh, proven talents like Mamad Nuri in the midfield. And players that we have got at the midfield are not captains either, so we are really, really lacking a captain. And the team really looks like it when you see it. There is good play. There is you know, some tactics that are pretty good, especially in the first game. But you just see that there's not someone who is making the decisions always in the middle. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And um, in terms of the first uh, week of the Pro League, uh, we saw, unfortunately, only three recorded victories. And similarly, as trade Russia, which I see is sort of developing over time, has been a disappointing stat in terms of goals scored in the league. So, for example, in the first week, we only had 12 goals in eight games. And this trend I keep seeing... Uh, repeat itself over and over again. And similarly, so, you know, when I look at the Estelle Love squad, I see problems for you maybe challenging for the title. Is where I see a lack of real firepower in this squad. Do you think Estelle Love fans should be worried about the real lack of firepower in this squad mm-hmm. in terms of challenging for the title? And what can we do to address this problem in the Pro League as a whole? I think to a certain one of the uh, key issues that was pointed out by the uh, Coaching staff at Estelle, and uh, they signed a, a Croatian striker in uh, Ero Pejic, who uh, scored around 20, 25 goals in 2015. And the fans are all kind of excited to, to see him in the blue shirt. But um, I think this Estelle team is very different to the one we've seen last season. I think, in terms of names, the team last season was much uh, stronger. But I think tactically, from what we've seen the last two games, it seems like the shackles are off the players. They, they play with, with a lot more freedom. Uh, they attack in much more numbers. And uh, that's why we've seen SLR score four goals in two games. And could have been much more if it wasn't for their poor finishing. Um, so although I agree with the point that you made, that there is a huge lack of goals in, in the league altogether, I think judging by the performances of Estelar in the first two games, um, Estelar fans can look forward to the rest of the season in terms of uh, goal scored. Also, at the end, at the end of the, uh, the pitch, uh, in my opinion, Estelar strengthened. Uh, obviously, the, the return of Rahmati is great news. Um, Hajj Mohammadi is a, is a centre-back I rate very highly. Um, I think he'll do great uh, and he's not done too bad in the first two games. Mesa Majidi has had a bit of a shaky start at left back. 
But uh, I think altogether, Salah has had a, a decent summer. Uh, they've recruited some good young players. The average age of the squad has uh, uh, decreased a lot. But uh, going back to your original question about the lack of goals, I think there's a lot of factors coming into it when you look at the bigger picture. And I think we could record a podcast just just to analyse uh, that sort of issue. I think uh, a lack of a quality pitch is certainly one thing. Um, not many teams are able to play on the ground, play uh, freely with the ball, and that obviously uh, creates a lot of problems. And, and also, if you watch most of the goals that have been scored this season, it's pretty much very Iranian, if you don't mind me saying so, you know, in terms of it's pretty much most of them are from set pieces. And uh, because that's one of the, not only, obviously, we've got very physical players that league is a physical league, but uh, that is one of the um, very key points in terms of, you know, going forward for every team. They always target set pieces as the priority for scoring goals. Yeah, yeah, I understand. In terms of one problem was the goal, but we didn't see this uh, last season with Sepahan. So for Sepahan coming into this season now on the back of a record-breaking five titles, or saying that Faraki has even added, um, kept faith in his title-winning squad by adding the experience of Padovani and Habib Abdulani to the back line. But there was one player in particular who I thought uh, made Sepahan tick, which was Moharam and Avid Kiyar. Uh, so their injury-prone captain at times uh, was absent for many games of the season and you saw as soon as his return sort of into the second half of the campaign we saw Sepahan produce a number of inspired performances and that sort of fed Sepahan's prolific front three of Chimba, Khalat, Barry and Sharifi plenty of ammunition to help Faraki win his second title in a row in terms of this question to you uh, Armin how important is Moharam and Avid Kiyar to Sepahan's title hopes this season are Sepahan in danger of becoming over-reliant on their captain this season and does the lack of playmaker in Iranian football at the moment has again become a big issue? And what do you think are the steps we could do to improve this sort of stat? Uh, I think uh, Navid Kia is very important. Uh, he, there was some kind of statics uh, uh, last year that most of the games that he was in, they either won or drew. And he would pretty much uh, you know, create all the goals for the front three, Khaled Bedi, Luciano, and Sharifi. And he is really a true captain in the, in the sense that he can you know, change the games around for his team and get them the victory. And him not being around, and I don't really get even the reason, there's really no official reason apparently, uh, is pretty, you know, is uh, dangerous for Sepahan. They haven't played the best. You know, they only won one nil against Estela Khuzestan in home. And they only won one nil against Zobahan in a game that was kind of controversial that could have had a penalty in it for Zobahan, you know, with a long, long ranger from Ali Karimi. Otherwise, they wouldn't have won it. So it is kind of dangerous and it's kind of looking prob- problematic for Sepahan at the moment. And the league is really missing playmakers. I don't really see that many playmakers in the you know, in the league. And most of the ones that already exist in the league are really young, you know. So I think that's a big problem. Uh-huh. Okay. And coming on to the other um, two teams that are contesting for the league most likely this season. One, Traktor Sazi, who becomes synonymous with their amazing fan base, which has been a great highlight in a league which is sort of declining in um, fans over recent years. But how... Da- how do you guys feel is the damage that has been caused by the psychological effect of that controversial game against Nafta Tehran? Alongside this, they have lost Edinho, the top goal scorer in the league last season with 20 goals, and the captain of the national team, Andranik Temurian. Would you say Traktor, even this season, have what it takes to compete for the league again? And have they re- sufficiently replaced these two players? Uh, first, starting off with Pejman. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always uh, that game against Naft, uh, for me, it's a historic game now, the, the 3-3 game. Uh, that was supposed to be Terraktor's year. Uh, they should have gone uh, for the goal and they should have won it. Um, with that being said, um, okay, they lost uh, Andrani Tamarine and 
Pemuron and in the last Edinu, two of the best players of the last uh, uh, IPL, uh, 2014-2015. But they have still a really good squad with uh, a couple of really good uh, players coming in. Um, I'm thinking of maybe uh, Surush Rafi and uh, Bakhtibar Rahmani in the midfield. Uh, they're, they're players good enough to be in the national team and they have been in the national team and hopefully they will get the confidence from Carlos Cairos to return. We also have uh, someone in Nariman Jahan who's, uh, this could be his year for making the international break for real. He's been constantly good in uh in interactor and it's also thanks to 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 see you know, that I've been watching him more because he, I know he had been talking about him and now when I watch him he seems um, a lot uh, more mature than his age and you also have seen you know, Shuri coming from loan from Zobahan uh, I think uh, I don't know if they're good enough for the gold for the gold uh, I don't really know much about the goalkeeper Mohamed Azal Akhbari but uh, it's a young keeper with potential but Shoja Khalilzade no I think Teraktar will be <laughs> maybe do a deja vu and then lose the gold in the last game but they will be there up there for sure would you would you say Peshman Traktor have been the most damaged in this tra- transfer window in terms of their summer signings in terms of the players leaving them um, no, well, in place of yeah, maybe good players leaving, but I I think they've done done uh, really good with players coming in at the club as well. So they're not damaged uh, in that sense, uh, and they have this really popular coach uh, uh, that can do really good for them. Uh, Tony, we will see uh, how we will perform with this squad. I think he have plenty of good players still. Taymorian. Okay, amazing. He, he, he's good, but we have plenty of good players here that can uh, replace those shoes in this year. And it's really up to them to to make that difference. I, I have big big hopes for someone like Iman Jahan. And, uh, well, nice to, be Rafi, nice to see Rafi and, uh, yeah, Sur Rafi doing good. Okay, thank you. And moving on to NAF, finally, from the title contenders. So the, basically, last season, their fairy tale continued. Uh, the fairy tale story continued. They reached the last 16 of the Asian Champions League, to many people's surprise. And they managed to keep hold of in the mad manager, Ali Reza Mansourian, and keep the highly rated goalkeeper, Ali Reza Bayram Vant. Though they've lost many players. Um, from their spine during this summer. Do you think NAFTA are the real winners of this transfer window in terms of signing Alvis Nong of Fulad, who scored nine goals in 14 appearances, uh, Sayed Jalala Hosseini, who's sort of the rock of the national team for many years, and even controversially signing Payam Asadadian, who has undisputed talent but is always in the limelight for the wrong reasons? This is for you, Sina. Do you think NAFTA are the real winners of this summer's transfer window? And if not, who would you think had the best transfer window? No, I certainly believe NAFT uh, benefited from from the transfer window. I think at the early stages of, of the window, it was looking dark for them because they lost uh, Haj Mohammadi, they lost Onam Nazarezai, Kamal Khan Yurinio, Hussein Ibrahimi, Padovani. You know, these players were uh, almost regular players in every game. But uh, as the summer went on, they started recruit, recruiting even better. I think the arrival of Carlos Santos from Zobahan is... It's fantastic for them. And as you mentioned, Jalal Hosseini mm. is, is uh, signed for them as well. I think those two, the partnership, they'll have, it will be really interesting to see. I think uh, it, those two will be very key if, if they are to to go far in the league, to win the league. Of course, with Bailon Van behind them, uh, hopefully they'll have more of a solid defence than they did last season. Mehdi Momini is another one. Esel uh, Khuzes was best played by, by a mile last season. Uh, very tricky winger. Uh, he scores goals. He, he gets many assists. I think he had altogether one of the best uh, statistics in the league in terms of goals and assists put together. And uh, Solerion, as he said as well, this, this kid is talented. No question about it. And I think a bit of uh, time off 
from the pressure, from uh, all the, um, you know, being under the spotlight at Perspol, I think will, will help him grow much more. And he's already worked with Mansoufian before in uh, Iran under 23s. He was his manager. And uh, Soderion admitted that uh, Mansoufian was, you know, Mansoufian being NAF's manager was uh, uh, key for him to accept the move to NAF and Tehran. So altogether, I think NAF uh, will be very exciting to watch this season. They haven't been uh, on great form in the last two games, uh, two draws out of two games. But um, I think as, as as the games go on, well, we can expect a lot more from them. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. Um, I'm going to go on to now the surprise package of the season. For me, last season, Zobahan... Um, were incredible from January onwards. We saw them climb to fourth in the league. Um, Yahya Gol Mohamedi uh, elevated his reputation amongst many critics he had from his time at Paris Police. We saw them win the Hafsi Cup, and we saw Barcelona had the Difa pulling the strings week in, week out for them. So my question to you, Armin, who do you think will be that sort of surprise package this season? Will it be Zobahan again, or will we see someone completely different sort of take the league by storm like they did? Uh, I don't think it's really even Zobahan is really a surprise contender anymore because with the with how well they did last year, uh, I think now they are kind of like expected from to do well. Most people think that they will surely make it in the uh, you know top four. Even though they haven't had a good form in the beginning, I think they will make it uh, at the top and they will go up the chart uh, up the table. You know, but I think for the surprise this year. It's really, uh, it's really tricky. It's between, it could be Sabay Rom, you know, it could be because they have Ali Dai as a, you know, manager that sometimes is amazing. Uh, it, I think that's, you know, that could be the biggest surprise, Sabay Rom, because they have got pretty good results for the, you know, the first two games. Right. So now for the player of, of the season, guys, who... We've seen maybe now the return of Javad Nekunam to the Iranian Pro League. He's going to be reunited with Majid Jalali at Saipa with his young squad. Finished a respectable seventh last season. We saw very good performances last season from Mehdi Atarami and Omid Ali Shah from, this, from Paris Police's disappointing season. They were sort of the bright hopes. Uh, Omid Ibrahimi at Estherla. As Pejma mentioned, Samana Nariman Jahan at Trakto. Again, with one particular performance in particular was his memorable hat-trick against Esteglal. And even Carver Razai, a guy, a young striker who's sort of had that reputation that he could be really a European, top European player, but he hasn't really sort of stagnated in recent years. In terms of your player of the season, for this season, who do you think will be sort of the leading candidates to become sort of the best player this season? This question goes to Pejma. Oh, man. <laughs> It's a hard one. It's a hard one. Um, uh, I, I really don't know. I, I have to check that up once more. I mean, there is good young players that we expect uh, a lot from, like a couple of them you already mentioned. And, you know, maybe there is this guy playing for, like, being in the bench of Esterol Ahvaz and all of a sudden makes a good performance. Um uh, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. I I, I hope, as I said before, that uh, Nami Jahan would get that international break. Yeah, uh, he's done it really good in the uh, in the league already. Uh, I re- I also hope that uh, Mansouryan and Gol Mohammadi can uh, show us some new young players that that can be good for the future. And we know Ali Dai uh, being controversial still manages to get good results as a coach or, or at least he had some good results uh, before with smaller teams maybe he can show us players that we really don't know good enough that can you know become a surprise so that's my answer Dina anything you'd like to add um, for me I think one of the ma- names that wasn't mentioned for the of the season I think Mehdi Sharifi is another one I think he'll definitely get you goals, you know, as long as you provide for him. And behind him are players with a lot of talent who will create chance for him. Uh, of course, Efsan Al-Safi, uh, Vuryaga Fouli, 
علی کریمی محرم نوید گیتی ها اینا رو بردیز و پلیز رو بردیم منشن خلط بری یعنی افکورس لسیانو از ویل سو I think he'll be there and about so he'll get many goals as he did last season. I think he ended the season with 12 or 13 goals, if I'm not wrong. So um, I think he'll definitely be there. But uh, for me, it'll depend on who win, who wins the league. So let's say if Esselor wins the league, then I think the main player would be Omid Ebrahimi. He'll, nef- he'll definitely have to perform if Esselor are to even get a Champions League spot. For Persepolis, he'll have to be Torami, you know, player like him who can drive the team forward. And uh, Terak Persuazi and Larry Jahan, as we already spoke of. So, um, yeah, I think those are the main names that uh, will be there in the box. Right, going on to relegation candidates. Last season, we saw uh, Nafta Master Suleiman and Pei Khan being relegated to the Azad Degan League for this start of this upcoming season. I think probably Pei Khan broke the record for the amount of nil nil draws that they had in that league. But in terms of this season, who would you say? I mean, is candidates for relegation. Who do you think will really struggle to get groups with the league? Uh, I think Estelar Ahwas will be the main, um, you know, uh, nominee because they came from uh, what is that, the second or third league of Iran, and I think that trans that transition and the amount that the small amount of preparation that they had would really hurt them. And I also think maybe uh, Rohan. You know, because even though they started pretty decently the first game against Fulad, the draw, you know, I think just Fulad were pretty awful that game. Otherwise, they wouldn't have got a you know draw against Raw Han, which pretty much got no pre- preparation because they didn't know are they going to be in the Premier League or in the Second League, and I think those two are the main ones uh, that I would go for for the relegation. The other one, the third spot. I'm not really sure. It could be pretty much anyone. You know, it could be even Persepolis. Who knows? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Peshman, anything you'd like to add? Man, Persepolis, that's harsh. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think definitely one of the two Ahwaz teams, uh, Esterlal and Fulad. Uh, sorry, we have three Ahwaz teams. Uh, um, I think uh, Esterlal Ahwaz and Esterlal Khuzestan both are, are serious candidates, actually. And uh, also uh, one of the two Mashadi teams, uh, both Padide and the uh, Sia Jamadon. And uh, I can't really see how how Gostaresh can can keep on surviving. Uh, so that would be my picks. And Sina, anything you'd like to add on? I think for me personally, I saw that I was nailed on for relegation. Uh, coming into the league with a manager who's never managed at this level before. With... Uh, players who some of them have never played in the uh, in the top division I mean they recruited some decent players such as Adel Kolar Kaj and goalkeeper Paravis Academy who's been performing great for them uh, but altogether I don't think they would have enough in them to to see them survive but another thing is with the Ahwazi teams is uh, considering the conditions that we have we have at Ahwaz the weather and, and the pitch I think they can make the most out of that so they can get as many points possible at home and, and who knows we, they, might, they might end up surviving because it's really difficult to go away to to Fulad and get results with these conditions as we saw with Persepolis going there and, and losing to Esselor Khuzestan talking of Esselor Khuzestan I was kind of tipping them for relegation before the season started but uh, I think the team that Abdullah Basi has gathered is a good side they are uh, a young side, they're hungry, uh, they're, they're good, they're organized, they're a good organized team. And although they lost 1 0 to Saban in the first game, I thought uh, they had a great game. Um, so I think they'd be all right. But uh, I'm also worried about Paddy there. I know they've had an okay first two uh, week, but um, I don't know. I've got a weird feeling about them. I don't think they can repeat the success that they had last season, this season as well. And um, one of the, their key points last season was the support that they received from uh, the people of Mashhad. Um, yeah, I think yeah. most of that support will go to Sia Jamigan now because a lot of Mashadis are uh, kind of in love with Abu Muslim and Sia Jamigan is much closer to Abu Muslim than Paddy there. And I think in the first two weeks you could tell that they feel closer to Sia Jamigan as uh, you know, maybe 
I don't know, maybe it's just feeling the idol, but I think Sia Jamal will be alright, but Paddy they may be in trouble. Okay. So, so, sorry, can I say something? Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think I'm actually mistaken myself, uh, and I think we all will be for Estegal Ahvaz. Um, yes, we all expect them to, to relegate, and that should be their strongest motivation. I mean, they basically have nothing to lose, and they know that, and they came in by, you know, becoming seventh in, in, in Azadegan. So they're not that good of a team, but after all, we've seen the Persian uh, uh, league. It's We have some good teams that are always good, but we have plenty of teams that can lose against any team, no matter if they play at home or away. The important thing, important thing here for Estelada was is to get motivated in a right way and keep keep being hungry and keep being that underdog because they have they have some decent players that they have they've uh, taken in and maybe during the, the winter break they can uh, take in some more players uh, that could be enough for them to survive i think they will fight for their survival i can't see them being in, in top five not even maybe top ten but uh, they will survive and it will be a, a fun thing to remember, like being a really weak side, not even being promoted you know, in a strange way and still managing to survive. So I would say Estelar Lahavaz would be my underdogs that will survive. Okay, that's great. And one final point for you guys. Um, champions of the 15th IPL season, starting with Sina. Um, I think it's going to be a lot closer than it was last. And last season was very close, but I think this season there's the teams right now are much closer to each other than maybe they were last season in terms of uh, strength and depth, in terms of quality in the squad. And um, I'm going to go with Naft. I think uh, Sepan. One of the key points for Sepan last season was they didn't have the uh, Champions League uh, distraction. And they just had to concentrate on the league, and they went and got the job done. So this season, I think they will have to deal with both competitions. But for me, I think Naft, uh, they are much stronger as well in terms of uh, the quality of the players. Not only their first eleven is very strong, but uh, they have players now coming off the bench who could do a job. And I think that's what makes them stand out. And also with the uh, arrival of Mang as well, and uh, what I had already being there, they'll have a lot more firepower than. Uh, Maybe they did last season. Armin, do you agree? Naft for the championship? Uh, yeah, Naft uh, is a pretty good choice. I would say uh, I still have some faith in, I think, Zobahan and even Persepolis. Because uh, Persepolis and Zobahan this year, I think, are the most unexpected teams. You know, you don't know their players. Most of their players are really young or are really amateur. But I think that could be kind of just like what Zobahan did last year and went up but if they do it sooner than January you know they could even get to the championship but if I had to choose one you know that's uh, the most probable I would just go probably with uh, Sepahan actually I'm fine to you Benjamin I will go with a shocker I will say either Malavon or Saipa I think it's time to to oh, wow. steer things up. Malavon because we they have a coach in Galenoi that knows how to win, and hopefully um, their their great home fans will will be there for them, and uh, he can he can get good results. And uh, yeah, Saipo as a as an outsider with Nekunam being that's. That leader, and they got some good players in in uh, 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 is I think, right? And there's uh, unknown Rosie and a couple of other players. So Saipa will be my sorry, Kolam Rizari Zai is in. Ah, never mind. Uh, I think Saipa will be a title winner. Okay, a big thank you to today's panelists and this concludes another edition of Gold Bazan Podcast. So throughout the course of the season we'll be covering the Persian Golf Premier League in more detail 
And if you have any suggestions or any feedback you would like to sort of give Gorbazan, we're available on iTunes, on SoundCloud, and please do remember to subscribe. Thank you again, big thank you again to today's panelists, and I hope to speak to you guys soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Great work.